Hello YouTube. So I want to be making this little theory type video off of 1109. It's more so just the information that we got out of 1109 to kind of go off of a theory that I'm sure you guys have been seeing around for a while. Just a small speculation except with evidence coming up in this chapter and past chapters, especially some things that I've talked about. I thought now would be a good time to kind of glob both of them together as one large theory type of thing, and it's about the betrayal of marines. See, in the past, I mean, it's actually been quite a few chapters, like, when I say a few, I really mean, like, if, like, a long time ago chapters that we've actually seen a sort of start of the betrayal of the marines, as we see, you know, Aokiji leave, and he joins the Blackbeard Pirates, and we see, with the formation of S.W.O.R.D., we're kind of getting this in the, you know, like, people who are marines that are acting outside of the marines you know the way that garp and you know the sword how they went to pirate island to you know just immediately start attacking you know an emperor's place which is typically something that you can't do you can't just go and attack the emperor's island right you can't start a fight with the emperor as you know lucha was being told like you can't just start a fight with him anymore he's an emperor of the sea he you know we have to get permission and stuff yada yada so now it's you know so it's these group of people who are in the Marines acting outside of the Marines. Almost like they just, at this point, aren't Marines. They're an anti-Marine force inside of the Marines. And I'm thinking, now that we've seen Egghead Island the way it's going, there may be uh, two new very powerful members. I mean, large other groups, especially such as CP0. It seems though uh, a couple of members of CP0 will be joining the anti-Marine team this we were marines, but not anymore type of thing. I'm not going to say that they're going to be pirates the same way like Aokiji did, or that they're going to stick in the marines the way that sword is, but there is a chance that somebody like Kizaru of them could join the Revolutionary Army, or could at least, you know, side with the Revolutionary Army, whether or not he actually joins them or not. But the reason why Kizaru might is, as we saw at the end of 1109, Kizaru, after being knocked down, but not knocked out, he is left laying on the ground, and rather than getting up and then back into the fight, he lays there with his arm over his eyes, specifically over his eyes in this fashion. That way is kind of a, a telling way of like, you don't want somebody to look directly at your eyes. Because if you're just tired and you're huffing and puffing because you just got, I mean, you just got smashed, flattened against your boss, you're going to be exhausted and you'd kind of be like this, or you know, hoof like this, but specifically, it's over the eyes. The reason why, in my guess, is because it's for remorse or sorrowfulness. Because what just happened before he was grabbed by Luffy and smashed? He just killed Vegapunk. He he's the reason why Vegapunk is going to die now. He shot a laser clean through his body. And now the, you know, the dead man switch has been pulled. And it's because of this that he's going to... You know, he's going to stop being the Marine. Because all his life, he's kind of been the, the lazy justice, right? He's kind of been the you know, whatever, like, I'll do what I need to do, right? If you tell me to do this, sure, I'll go do it real quick, right? There's no problem for me. And he's kind of always had that feel of, as long as I just do what I'm told, everything will be fine. But now here's the moment when he's done as he's told. He's ended Vegapunk, an old friend of his. He was tasked with, like, attacking Kuma and Bonnie, old friends of his. He was tasked with attacking Sentamaru, his nephew. You know, all these people that he's known for years... And it's finally catching up to him that no matter what he's done, all his friends, he's had to attack them. And at this point, he's he's finished off Vegapunk. And even finishing off Vegapunk this early on couldn't prevent it. Even doing what he was tasked to do, the secret is still going to get out. So now he's going, now he's feeling the, well, it was all for, you know, kind of like an all for nothing. Why did I, but you know, why did I hurt my friends just, just for this? So now he's, it's seemingly like he's going to have that mental lapse of, I'm, I'm done, I, I don't want to do this anymore. When I get up, I'm helping them now. I'm no longer going to be a Marine, I'm going to help, you know, the anti-Marine stuff. And then the other one is Rob Lucci. As I've mentioned in a previous video, or maybe it was just in a TikTok, Rob Lucci, with his fight with Zoro, has, you know, a very interesting line. See, the entire time they're fighting, they're going back and forth, and it seems pretty even. Uh, Zoro is just, you know, three-sword style, but not Asura, and Lucci is in full hyper-transformation, which is his strongest. He seems to have his cloak active, and it seems like he's full out fighting, but he's not able to beat Zoro. With a large reason why he's not winning Zoro against Zoro is Zoro hasn't even used Asura. He hasn't used his nine sword technique, which means at any point, Zoro can go all out with one last thing. As far as we know, Lucci doesn't have that. 
So when Lucci starts saying the line, when they're both exhausted, saying sometimes it's better if the for the arm to be cut off from the body for the body to survive, he's saying that to Zoro, saying like, oh, like I'm doing better than you. Maybe it's better if you just give up so that the you know your crew can like can get out of here instead of waiting. But Zoro responds with, oh, it's funny you think you're winning, which kind of says like. Zoro understands the situation. He knows that this fight isn't even. This isn't a back, like a, a you know, a back and forth fight. The number two of the Straw Hat crew is stronger than the number one of CP0. So at this point, even Lucci seems to understand that, and he also understands the situation that's happening on the island, which is it's being totaled, it's being destroyed. And to be honest, they don't really care that he's there. To them, he's just an item. He was just a weapon. So at this point, he's kind of realizing. It might just be better if I if I lose, if I just delay you and do something and be exercised from the rest of the government and the body will survive. But then there is the thought of, well, what if you cut off the arm, but the arm can survive? What if you attach it to a new body? So if you get rid of Luchi, the weapon, the arm, the weapons, you know, and arms is another word for weaponry, right? So if you get rid of the arm of the body, you know, get rid of Luchi off of the war government, and you now put that arm on a new group, on a new anti-marine team. You now have Lucci, who his sole purpose is a weapon for the marines, who's now being not betrayed by the marines, but he's realizing that the marines just don't actually care about him or the rest of CP0 or any member of Cyperpole, because like there's several groups of Cyperpole who are just like on Egghead, who have had like very minimal help to try to get him. You've kind of sent more CP members, but you haven't like sent somebody to like actually do something right so now here's Lucci who realizes this the CP members are fully expendable so if he sees this and like Zoro or Jinbei who is making his way to get to Zoro because Zoro doesn't need, know that they need to leave right now so perhaps Jinbei gets there and sees Lucci kind of exhausted maybe with Kaku who catches up and kind of convinces like hey you guys don't have to be a part of the marines you guys can do your own thing but still do what you want you just don't have to have a boss. You don't have to have, you know, the Godose or the fleet admiral telling you to do. Just do what you've been doing, but target who you want now. So perhaps with Kaku, Jinbei, and Zoro all kind of talking to Luchi, slowly but surely Luchi will, you know, side against the Marines. So it's interesting to see as slowly, you know, since the, the uh, Battle of Marine Ford, slowly but surely the Marines have kind of been dissipating you know Sengoku no you know retired the whole formation of sword Aokiji left new admirals new vice admirals it's this whole you know changing of the you know changing of the order changing of the bell whatever it's the, the expression is and it's this whole thing and it's slowly becoming less and less of the current world government the current marines and I'm sure that once the whole fight begins and the whole battle thing ends the world government and the marines will no longer be called world government or marines. They'll have a fully new name with Kobe as the helm, right? So it's interesting to see as slowly but surely the marines kind of fall apart as more information is seen by just the marines in general. But with this new information that's going to come out, there might be even more marines who, you know, kind of slowly get away and start joining sword or start, you know, seeing the inward thing and being like... Maybe there's somebody out there who's better for me. So, but that that's probably going to do it on this one. If you guys enjoyed it and you like it, then go ahead and like and subscribe and comment down below your like so I can continue it. If you didn't like it, then go ahead and dislike and let me know down below in the comments what you didn't like so I can improve on it. So next time you see one of my videos, you can like it and enjoy it. But that'll do it for this video. Until next time, bye guys.